regarded as a beautiful experience. It is life inside another life, and expectations are high. But what if things don't go as planned, and the experience is otherwise? On the ward, instead of love and care, cruel words, compassion is nowhere. No consent, no respect, no choice, no empathy, no sympathy, and just no one is listening. During birth, the baby's well-being really matters, but a difficult push can leave mother's dreams in tatters. Push, the truth about obstetric violence. Obstetric violence starts with the lack of informed consent in the maternity services. Obstetrics is the branch of medicine that looks after people that are giving birth, the birthing body and the baby coming out. But violence is exactly what um, violence says. It's an act that's done to someone, to a body, that um, causes them pain, trauma and distress. Obstetric violence is where the care of the profession and the violence of the profession come together. For me, like that moment of having a vaginal exam and being in excruciating pain and having someone put their, their fingers inside of me and try and figure out where my cervix was at was totally inhumane. They said, baby, baby seems in some, some distress. We, we want to get him out. We're just going to give you a little cut which is how they describe episiotomies to people. Like, why are they going to say to you, we're going to put scissors inside of your vagina and cut you. They cut me and then they were like, now we need to help baby come out. The midwife, the second one who had come into the room next door, who had introduced herself, standing at my shoulder over here, Ed's over here and him going, Martha, you have to do this. And me thrashing around saying like, I can't, I can't, being just completely distraught. And her standing here shouting at me, like verbally shouting at me and telling me like, Breathe down into your, like, push down into your bottom. Don't scream into your neck. Why the hell are you screaming at me? Like, what good does that do? Like, a gentle hand, a, like, reassuring word. Not yelling at somebody when they're trying to birth their baby and bring life into this world. Is not limited to obstetricians only. It includes all healthcare professionals and their support staff within the maternity care context. So it also includes midwives, it might include cleaning staff, it might inc include um, people involved with admission into hospital. It's, it includes a wide spectrum of people. If we are living in a society that generally undervalues women and doesn't respect them and their, their self-determination, their agency and their autonomy, we cannot expect that then to happen in maternity care services. The World Health Organization researchers have established seven typologies of obstetric violence. It includes physical abuse, emotional abuse, poor rapport between healthcare professionals and um, their patients, discrimination, stigma, and um, sexual abuse. But what we find is even in those seven typologies, there are certain um, violations that are not included. E eu nunca vou esquecer o rosto da midwife. Pensava pelo meu conhecimento que era só um toque para ver a situação da se estava dilatando, se não estava, qual era a situação da bebê. Uhum. E aconteceu que ela colocou a mão é, e doeu muito, doeu muito. Eu com uma mão eu segurava o meu marido, a mão do meu marido, e com a outra eu segurava a da midwife. Aliás, segurava não, mas eu quase arranquei porque foi uma dor muito intensa. E eu gritei, eu cheguei a gritar e para mim aquilo não era normal. And the registrar midwife sits down below me and starts like, okay, we need to do your stitches now. I'm squirming around, I like can't even sit still. I'm like, you have to stop, you have to stop, please stop. And she basically ignored me, like on and off for a few minutes. And I was like, you, I need more, I need pain relief, I need pain relief, please, please, please. So she's like taking this like long needle like and jabbing me in my vagina and vulva like, like just like, okay, well I've given you the maximum amount I can now, but then not waiting for it to set in. 
she is stitching me up. Not only did she ignore my request for pain relief and completely scoff at me and just basically mock me. She was so rude. And I remember thinking, oh my, like, this is my baby. Like, I've just had a baby. And this woman, like, just almost making fun of me for being in pain. The question is not whether it happens or whether it's common. We know that. We do not have the statistical data though to establish its prevalence because we have no agreement in how to define obstetric violence. People come out of their birthing experiences and they say, well, if this hadn't have happened, I would have died, my baby would have died. And so we hide a lot of trauma and a lot of the obstetric violence. If we think about the black and brown bodied community, they hold a lot of the obstetric violence quietly within themselves. It's very critical for migrant women because uh, one of the main barriers that they find is communication. Every woman in, in the UK is entitled to have an interpreter, but then many women and even NHS staff do, know about, do not know about it. During the troca da, dos, das dos turnos, né, dos funcionários, veio uma brasileira que, para a minha felicidade, é, naquele momento, eu achei o máximo, achei que seria ótimo. Nós que não falamos, uh, não é a nossa língua mãe, é muito mais difícil, né, a gente quer uma coisa mais confortável. E tendo uma brasileira é o que a gente pensou, nossa, que bom, tal, mas não foi assim que aconteceu, infelizmente. Então a gente perguntava em português, ela falava em inglês. Aquela situação meio crítica era um pouco é, irritante. Obstetric violence might differ in its manifestation when you're working with publicly funded healthcare services as opposed to privately funded healthcare services. Because the way that the gender inequality plays out in those relationships is vastly different. The knock-on effects of the trauma will go through families, will go through neighbourhoods, will go through towns and cities and countries and the world. And I blame myself for years. Like, I, there's still things that come up where I, I blame myself for the first minutes, weeks, months. If they have an experience like this, they have several avenues that they can take they can make a complaint to the hospital itself, they can speak to the birth trauma organisation, you can talk with a therapist who specialises in perinatal and birth trauma. Most people won't do this immediately because it's too fresh. You have years in which you can do this. Have a debrief with them at seven months, you know, when a hospital tells you that they're fully, oh, well, our staffing levels were safe that day, but you're left for three hours on your own, you're like, is that actually a joke? Like. How can you say that to me? I don't have a formal complaint, a formal apology from my hospital, and I know that if I do get one, if I still pursue it, it will be some kind of cut and paste. Talking about it and, and letting uh, women know that they are not crazy, they are not, uh, you know, coming up with something as they are very often told, uh, I think is a very important step because we, we need to raise awareness about it. We've got to look at our curriculum, we've got to look at our language, and we have to have honest conversations about what cultural safety and cultural humility looks like, and we need to put that into practice. Obstetric violence as a specific wrong and harm is not recognised in law in the UK. Theoretically, there might be avenues in both criminal law and civil law, but what we find is that this is not translating. I've been told, yeah, it's not, it's not an avenue. Although you have legitimate, your human rights were breached, um, and you were violated and there was like obstetric violence, you don't have a case in terms of like, it's very hard to prove a psychological harm case. Those cases that are successful generally involve damage caused to babies as a result of inadequate treatment of women. And the women themselves who have been violated and experienced the obstetric violence are actually nearly sidelined. I do think that we need a law introduced to clarify what obstetric violence is, 
where the harm lies and how do we remedy it. It says a lot about the value of women in society when her harms have to be so extreme before we will take notice that her rights have been violated. The reason I know what happened to me was obstetric violence is because the parts of my experience that I was in control of, that I was in my zone, that I was in tune with my baby and I didn't have outside interference, were beautiful and really powerful. And when other people tried to take over our experience, it became violent and that's where the pain was, that's where the suffering was. Obviously there are times when intervention is necessary, but each of these should be done with true consent, informed consent. Birth should be an experience that people come out of feeling they had a good experience. Whether that's a physiological birth, they've given birth in water, they've given birth with no interventions, or a medical birth, a highly medicalized birth. Women, women do have positive birth experiences and it would be helpful if we had more resources to explore what it was that made those birth experiences positive so that we can invest the resources to replicate that. There is an obstetrician called Michelle Odin that says that if we want to change the world, we have to change the way our children are being born.